Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are the rock of ages and the living God that is mightier than what anyone can imagine. We glorify your name and give you thanks. We call upon you this morning as we remember all our veterans, past and present, especially those who have paid the utmost price with their lives to bring peace to the world. We ask you for your healing on those who have been wounded in body and soul. We ask you to bless their families and give them your peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all our veterans, men and women, for their service to our great nation. I also want to say thank you to their families for their unseen, for their unseen sacrifices they have made. So this is Veterans Day, and our church is named after a soldier who became a saint because of his actions and deeds towards others. On this day, we reflect and remember our young men and women who have fought in several wars in order to bring peace to the whole world. Many of these young men and women lost their lives because of their courageous actions to bring peace to the whole world that we live in and the freedom that people, everybody is enjoying today. The numbers of the wounded veterans are 10 times more than those who love their lives. The families of the injured veterans have witnessed their loved ones suffering and the thought of that sometimes make them feel uncomfortable and helpless. I encourage all of us to remember our veterans in our daily prayers and especially for their families because the pains of our veterans are real. They are the only ones dealing with the effect and aftershock of war. Again, I come with my question. Are we doing enough as a nation to protect our veterans? Are we doing enough to make sure that our veterans are taken care of when they return home. We are remembering today because of the sacrifices and commitment made by these young men and women for our great nation. November 11 is also St. Martin's Day. St. Martin's makes sacrifice and commitment for the betterment of others. St. Martin's lived in the first day of the century and was born in what today's present day is hungry. He served as a soldier in the Roman army and had a conversion experience at the age of 18, which led him to become a monk and eventually Bishop of Tours in what is today France. We all probably have heard about St. Martin's story. He was at the gate of the city of Amiens with his soldiers when he met a scantily dressed beggar. Saint Matthew cut his own military cloth in half and shared with the beggar. What a commitment! What a sacrifice to make! Our gospel for today is often called the widow's mark. And it is a story again of sacrifice. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sum, but a poor widow came and put in two small coins, which is what they paid. 
Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasure. It let them know that the rich folks have contributed out of their abundance, but the widow has put in everything she had and all she has to live on. Brothers and sisters, what do Veterans Day, St. Martin's Day, and the story of the widow's night have in common? Sacrifice and commitment to do the right thing. I'm encouraging all of us today to participate in a church stewardship campaign. What is your commitment today to the Lord? Let us look at it this way. If I put a grain of salt in a cup, can any of us count it? Let's think about this way again. What are the blessings of God in our lives? The seen and unseen blessings from God. So, how do we thank God? I don't like talking about money. Very difficult for me to make me feel uncomfortable. But, I found myself I've got to talk about it today. <laughs> <laughs> to run a church, we need your financial support. However, God needs your heart. And we need your talent for you to utilize it in our church. Yesterday, uh, during the convention we have in the church, other churches in the area we are talking about was the ministry that we're doing in our churches. It's amazing when our church in our group, what we are talking about, what's going on, <coughs> and what, and we have to report back uh, when we, when the uh, convention resumed about what we've discussed about. Our church members were able to tell the whole congregation what we were doing in our church, and when I listen to what we're doing, we have a lot of ministry here, better than other churches. Uh, I'm gonna, this one I'm about to say, I didn't tell my wife, but I'm going to say it so I get in trouble at home. <laughs> Around three or four weeks ago, my uh, sister-in-law became a fellow, uh, she's a chartered banker back home. So they gave her a fellow. And I was talking to her husband. One thing he said is that, how great is this to serve the Lord? That kind of God, how great is this to serve the Lord? And looking back about how we serve the Lord, I remember uh, growing up back home in Nigeria. My mom used to wake us up around 5 30 every Saturday. We go and clean the church. As a young boy, I hear it. I don't like it. But looking back, that's how it gives back. Uh, this is a lady that didn't get pregnant 30 years after her marriage. That when, that's when she started having us. I found myself doing the same thing after I finished my college in Oklahoma. I was working in the church and everything, I uh, cleaned the church up. After I get my check, I give it back to the church. This is my, I'm just talking about my own commitment, I mean, my own testimony now about serving the Lord. It's about us, all of us, participating that is how I was able to participate. Joining this church 
when he first came here. I remember three young kids from the youth group making my kids feel comfortable talking to them. That's why we're still here. Because all those three little kids make a commitment, make a sacrifice that they make my kids feel comfortable. That's why we're here. That's why my family is here. So my question is, I ask a lot of questions. What are we doing to participate in this church? Like I said, we all need, it takes a village. The fact is, it's not how much we give, it is the matter of how we give. I want us to reflect on the blessings God has made for us. There's no church, doubt that our church has done a lot in the community to help those in it. But that's what God asked all of us to do anyway. So I'm encouraging us and I'm challenging us that we need to look down on ourselves and make sure that we participate in this stewardship campaign. So if you have not done that today, I encourage you to do so. And whatever we can help out with the church is something that we need to do. Let us pray. Please open uh, page 826 of the Book of Common Prayer. Number 35. Almighty and most merciful God, remember before you our veterans or poor and neglected persons, whom it will be easy for us to forget. In the one last and the best of the in all and the same, all of our brethren and together, help us to lead our lives to our brethren and all our sisters, and to turn your sorrow into joy. Grant this brother the love of your Son, who for our sake became more, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.